Okay, next we're going to show you how to add plant symbols to your planner drawing. First I'm going to go ahead and scroll in so we can see just a little bit better. I'm going to be working in this area here. Okay, over in the content librarian on the right side of your screen, you should see the first tab is your favorites tab. This is where you're going to store your commonly used plant materials. Now the first one that I want to select here is the Japanese blood good maple. I simply drag it over and drop it into place. When I'm done I right click and that releases that for my cursor. I'll go over and select the Emerald Arborvitae, drag it into place, drop it, and then come over. If I, You'll notice that my symbol is still attached to my cursor so if I want to do additional symbols I can just move to the location to place it, click, and it drops a second. When I'm done, I right click and that releases that symbol from my cursor. Okay, I'll go ahead and grab a common boxwood and drag it into place, click, and click, and then I'm going to do a right click to release that from my cursor. Now I'll go ahead and grab the Stella Daylily and I'm just going to come in here and click several across the front just like that. I'll go ahead and do a right click to release that. Okay, now whenever we place plants you'll notice that they come in in different sizes and that's because we're bringing those in at what we call the mature size of that plant. Now for this particular one it looks to be uh, roughly 11 feet wide so uh, that's what we're calling the mature size of this Japanese blood good maple. Now this size has nothing to do with the planting size that we're actually planting here. If we right click on that symbol and go to select size you'll see that I have selected a 2 inch caliper tree. Let's say I want to change this to a 10 gallon. I'll select that so now the 10 gallon tree will show up on my estimate and on my legend. I can also do the same thing with the shrubs. On the Arborvitae, I'll right click on it, go to select size, and go to 5 to 6 feet. I also need to repeat that with this one. Okay, so when I do an estimate or a legend, it will use those sizes on the estimate and legend. Okay, now let's say I want to add a symbol to my project that's not in my favorites. We'll go over to the next tab, which is the symbol library. Okay, here at the top of the window you'll see my symbol wizard. This is where I can select the categories and subcategories. I'll select tree deciduous and once the library loads I'll go down to the bottom and I'll simply click on the scroll bar and I can scroll over to the one that I want. Now one little trick that we can do here is if you just click on a symbol within the list and you want to jump to a certain symbol you can click on the first letter of the alphabet for that symbol. I'm going to choose the letter C okay and the one that I want here is the weeping cherry so I'll click on it and drag it, drop it into place, just like that. Okay, let's say for example I want to add one of these symbols to my favorites. What we can do is we can right click on the symbol and select add to favorites. I'll select the favorites here and click OK. And now when I click back over to my favorites tab, you'll see that the Crab Prairie Fire is listed here as a favorite. Okay, now let's say I'm having some trouble finding a symbol in the symbol library. What we can do is we can go over here to the last tab, which is the search tab, and it brings up a search dialog box. Now, what I'm looking for here is uh, a knockout rose, so I'm just going to put in the word knockout and click OK. Now that should return anything with the word knockout in either the common name or the botanical name. Now if I type in the words knockout rose and do a search for that, it's not going to find it because it's looking for exactly the uh, characters here of knockout rose and you'll see that the knockout roses are actually rose comma knockout. Okay, 
So sometimes less information in this search box is better than too much information. Alright, so that's how we add symbols to our planner project.